I wear a lot of different hats. I started a, I started off as a battle rapper when I was 16 years old. Um, I was a part of the first battle rap website called illmusic.com, really bringing hip hop uh, to the forefront right as the internet was becoming a, a broadband. When you asked to, when you had to wait 20 minutes to get the AOL and you saw the ticker symbol come down, that was that was that was the generation I come from, I come from. But uh, I started from battle rap and then uh, I went into uh, a group, you know, as I was, I got over battle rap, I got over the negativity, I, I got into songwriting. And then I started a group uh, called ADD, Always Double Dipping. We were like uh, the West Coast version of the Beastie Boys. So we, we were crazy, we had dope gimmicks, you know, we were sponsored by Vitamin Water, we had millions of hits online, and then Facebook came and everything changed and, you know, things fall back. And then around 2011, um, I decided to separate myself from the group and uh, focus on being an independent artist. I put out 60 music videos in three years. Um, I got features with all kinds of people, Mr. Fab, San Quinn, King Lil G, Daylight, my boy Charm. Just a lot of up and coming artists as well uh, that you guys will soon be hearing about. And it wasn't until about, I'd say about two years ago, I had the opportunity to, um, I come from the weed industry. Let's just fucking take the gloves off, all right? I was shipping a bunch of fucking weed to another side of the state and I lost a bunch of money. So I had to figure out what I was gonna do with my life. And uh, you know, it forced me to really reflect on life and uh, reflect on what it is that I was doing as far as music and as business and how I wanted to be, uh, how I wanted to be remembered, you know, as far as a leader and an entrepreneur. So I took my little bit of trap money, uh, put it into the coffee shop, you know, and uh, I became the donut don. You know, I bought I bought two uh, two two donut shops in a, in a matter of a year. Still in the cannabis industry, edibles, shit like that. And uh, you know, then that's when my knowledge really started to expand. Uh, when you're running a full business and you're keeping the lights open and you're doing whatever it takes, you learn a lot about yourself. So I used that knowledge on top of owning a studio and being an independent artist and working with other artists over the duration of my career. Um, it put me in a better position to really uh, help educate. I've never been one to complain about where hip hop's at. I've always been one to focus on a solution. And I felt the best way to um, give back to mother hip hop is to share my knowledge, you know? And, uh, and once I really got to a platform where I spoke and people listened and it, it took the legitimacy of owning a business and not being a, a fucking weed dealer it took the legitimacy of owning a business for people to really open their eyes. I still had the same work ethic. I'm still the same person I was when I was doing the weed shit, you know, but all of a sudden you put a Maserati in my hands and you put a business in my fucking thing. Everybody want to listen to me now. So I started speaking, people listen. And, uh, you know, it's the last, uh, the last year has been fucking awesome. You know, me and daylight, uh, put out a lot of great music. Uh, we got a holiday album, uh, called Friday the 25th. Look for that, uh, Christmas on the West, you know, just look for everything that, uh, Google my name. I'm a part of everything, WWE, I, I get it in, I get it in. But uh, it wasn't until I started doing the business stuff and really understanding uh, what my purpose was, which is being a professional middleman, connecting the dots and, uh, and really being a leader, you know? And uh, when I really accepted that role as of the last year, um, things just really started cracking off and booming for me. The key to anything in life you want to do, and I want you to listen to me, people, when I say this, you have to fucking love it. That's it. Nothing else. You have to love what you do. You truly have to. I love waking up in the morning and going to get my coffee at my coffee shop. I love making hip hop music. I love helping other artists. And doing what I love has put me in a position to continue to do what I love. And I think uh, when you have a, when you have a gen genuine, uh, genuine purpose and you truly love what you do, success is imminent. To me, Rakim, Tupac, Biggie, Wu-Tang Clan, they painted certain pictures to me that I was able to see. Even though I'm not black, even though I didn't come from New York or wherever they grew up at, I still understood it because they were painting a picture to me. So we get out the car, keep in mind our car wasn't on the road anymore, it was in the, it was in the ditch. And we look over, we see the dude's car, and I'm, you know what I'm saying, I'm fucking pissed. I, I think I have socks. I don't remember what the fuck, because we were just comfortable. It was a car, right? we were just, one way we were warm as fuck, and then the next minute it's cold, bloody, shits, glasses everywhere. My mom is like hyperventilating. She's driving, so she's hyperventilating. I'm like, you know, we could sit here and hyperventilate, but we should probably see if this woman is okay. There's like four or five cops pull up to this gas station, and one of our guys who was on the tour is coming out of the gas station, sees the driver, and he's like, hey, Link, what's up? You know, what's going on? What's the deal? Is everything all right? Somebody messing with you? Because we had been really cool with her. We had never had any beef with her. She's like, excuse me, I'm talking to the police right now. And it was like, oh, snap, okay, like, hold up. 